back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the difference between TSX cams and stock cams and a K20Z3. Both of these cars are full bolt-on. They're different cars, but one has um, TSX cams with the stock 50 degree VTC gear and the other one is stock cams with 50 degree. So we're going to start out by comparing the power that the TSX cams gained in the mid-range here. I'm just going to make this bigger here. So comparing torque first, um, coming from the TSX cams in the mid-range at about 4,700, you got 156 pound-feet. And then on the stock cams, you got 137. So that's 19 pound-feet of torque difference there. That looks like it's probably the biggest difference um, in the mid-range. And then for horsepower... Um, looks like the biggest difference is between these two. These are the solid lines. So um, for the TSX cams, you're looking at 131. And for the stock cams, you're looking at 115. So that's 16 horsepower. Um, that's the biggest difference there in the mid-range. And, you know, that's right in the 4,000, 5,000 area there. Moving on to this part up here, this is where the stock cams are going to shine a little bit more than the TSX cams. So... Um, not by much, though. As far as the torque goes, it seems to stay with it a lot better on the K20 cams. Uh, 162 torque. And then from the TSX cams down there, you're looking at 155 torque. So, you know, that's 7 pound-feet difference. Not too big of a difference. Not as extreme as we saw um, in the mid-range, though. And then for power, you're making 207 on the K20 cams. 198, that's the biggest difference there. So that's 7-wheel horsepower. I'm sorry, nine wheel horsepower there. But um, with the TSX cams, the power tends to keep winding out the higher RPMs you go. The K20 power starts to fall off around 218 and it's 227 on the TSX cams. So you got about nine wheel horsepower up top there. So overall, when you look at the areas that, when you look at the areas between the curves here, um, you gain more power overall with the TSX cams. Um, compared to the stock cams because you gain a lot more in the mid-range you do lose a little towards the top end but right at the end the tsx cams make up for it keep in mind these are not tuned on the same air fuel ratio um, but they're pretty similar all right so i showed you guys what a k20 is on stock cams versus tsx cams and you can see the difference that the tsx cams made in the mid-range but just to give you guys a better idea i'm going to compare this with a bolt-on k24 so it's got a tsx motor the k24a2 um, same one that the cams came out of. But as you guys can see, with a K20 with the TSX cams, it almost mimics the power band exactly of the TSX motor. Keep in mind, the K20 has full bolt-ons, and the K24 isn't completely full bolt-on, and there's still a lot of room um, for more mods to do, such as 50 VTC and a Type S oil pump. You can see the K20 definitely keeps taking off as the K24 is starting to smoothen out. Um, towards the top around 7,000. The K20 just keeps building and building up. If he got the oil pump and the 50 VTC, his power band would go up um, a lot more and it wouldn't drop off as quickly. And he'd probably get some more in the mid ranges too. All right, so this is comparing all three of the graphs. So you can see the green line is the K20, red line is the K24, and then the blue line is the K20 with the TSX cams. So still around 7,000, the K20 makes the most power um, with the stock cams. But overall, I would say the TSX cams are the best option if you're going to compare all three. Unless you're going to do a 50-degree VTC on the K24, it's not really worth it. You might as well stay K20 if you already are K20Z3, and then just keep adding mods and the TSX cams from there. I would definitely recommend getting TSX cams if you have a K20Z3 just because of how much it actually positively affects the power band of the vehicle. If you learned something from this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching and hope you guys have a good one.